going to be brazing, or not even brazing, soldering? Soldering. Yep. Soldering copper to brass like you do with a expansion valve or a valve body or something that, um, you know, would be copper to brass. I'm trying to think, probably really an expansion valve or a bonnet, like on a distributor tube. Now, granted, uh, these pieces have been pre-sanded, and he's going to put the copper to brass on that like it shows. It requires a flux, correct? Correct. So this is our multi-saw flux. Um, and multi-saw, so not only copper to brass, but multiple metals. So all dissimilar metals. Um, whether it's aluminum to copper, a stainless to pop metal, um, I mean a whole slew of different metals. And the best part is, is 350 degree uh, bonding temp. So we take our flux. I'm just going to lay a little bead out along here wherever we're working. Um, Want to make sure we say if you're using a flux brush, make sure you get a little bit on each side here. I'm not going to worry too so the, much. You know, the big thing is, you guys, you know, when we're brazing out in the field and we've got our oxygen settling torch and we're overheating, and then how many times is that distributor, that small quarter inch line, popped out of the bonnet and you're like, oh crap, what are we going to do? Here's a spot where you could really use it, and then you wouldn't have to worry about that distributor popping out of the bonnet. He's going to show you. He's literally using propane. Propane, yep. Propane. So you can actually use butane on this. So 350 degrees, it comes really, really quick. And another great part is that our flux here has a color changing agent. So the moment we hit that 350 degree point, it's going to change to a caramel color, uh, letting the user know that we are at the flow temp and go ahead and add the rod. So we're going to turn your flame way down. Check it um, out. Check that flame out. Just, just hardly anything. Um, and we're gonna heat, we wanna heat the metal, not the flux, because we don't wanna change the flux, the color, before the metal's to temp. So once it starts bubbling like this, we know it's activated. It's letting us know that to uh, start keeping an eye out for that caramel color. Um, and you guys will see, once we see the color, I'm gonna remove the heat. So right there, we're starting to see it. I'll pull my heat away. I'm just gonna lay the rod in there. You see how it just flows right around. And I'll do another one here. I'm just gonna lay, I'm just gonna let it sit in here. We'll use our heat to let it just kind of flow around. Beautiful. So I think the big thing to know is you guys right now, your naysayers are gonna be like, oh, that was so easy. It's just flat. It's not a big deal. He's not actually brazing on a piece of pipe. I've actually seen it in person. He uh, soldered it on a piece of pipe. Uh, if you were doing this in the field and you had a uh, a bonnet in a vertical position, you would be heating up the pipe around it, not actually the, the flux. And I think that's the key, is you have to change a little bit of your brazing style. Instead of putting 1300, 1500 degree heat on the solder or on the fitting and trying to melt on the, uh, the Harris 50 with the flux, you can do this with 350 degrees, a little bit of solder. Look how that's drying out. Yep, and we're looking at 20,000 PSI. So at that low temperature, we're getting a huge tensile strength. And we're gonna show you guys, this is a, a cleaned one that we've already cleaned. So you can see, for one, it's a really pretty bead on there, but the backside, that penetration, we didn't lay any material on the back. It just drew that through in, in a capillary flow. And, uh, and that's where we're getting a lot of that tensile strength from. So really pretty, makes you look like you know what you're doing. So turn this around because the big thing too, is we discussed about purging with nitrogen to keep oxidation from inside the pipe. Because the temperature is so low, you don't really need to purge, do you? Correct. Because there'll be no oxidation inside the pipe. Yep. So what an awesome here. I'm gonna come around on this side. He just finished that. Yep. There is no oxidation on that pipe at all, uh, that fitting. So you won't have to worry about an impurities getting in to the distributor section. You won't have to worry about impurities getting into the oil. You won't have to be worried about impurities getting inside the screen to the TXV or plugging up the dryers. Man, this is just a really fabulous product. So if you put that in, now where's the, where's the block, the heat block? So, so if you put this in with an area like the, like the hot block, you put this together with it, you've got a solder weld product that really does an amazing job. And if you had hot block in an area like if you had fiberglass or you had electrical wiring, Maybe you had an, uh, an EEV, an electronic expansion valve, where you've got a brass body, you've got the hot block on there. It's protecting all the components. You don't have to worry about overheat. This is a really great, I mean, just a great complete package application. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing product. Hot block. Look at that. Okay, guys, as always, work safe, be safe. 
Thanks a bunch for watching. I appreciate the follow. Check me out on Instagram, Facebook at HVAC Reefer Guy.